Hello, Libby Gray, designer, director for the band Styx, back with you making a second video today because the first video ran way too long at 15 minutes. But I was in the middle of kind of a meaty topic about follow spot operators and their varying skill levels. So I wanted to continue with a second smaller segment uh, on this, this tutorial about how to call follow spots. It is it's always been possible to run into a situation where you've got four or six brand new ops. It never happened all that often, typically at county fairs, where you are presented with an array of hardworking, well-intentioned, whip-smart, corn-fed country boys, maybe the entire football team, I've seen this, and they are anxious to run follow spots for the big rock show. And we also have talked in previous videos about ways you can make that call easier on them. You start by explaining what a cue is, defining a standby and a go, teaching them the protocol of what they're gonna be listening for. You also slow down your call and speak with a clear, calming, authoritative voice. You give longer standbys, you give repeated standbys. All of these things will get you through a show with a flock of untried operators. But I'm also thinking this topic needs a little more um, delving into because situations with lots of new operators are getting more common and may continue to get more common because who knows why uh, you know maybe there's maybe there's some freaky worldwide pandemic and a whole bunch of experienced spot operators retire and some of them die I know it sounds ridiculous and far-fetched but you know it could happen and in that case, you're likely to find a lot more new people on the business end of the cannons in the back of the room. So let's talk about a few more ways to, not, we've already talked about how you can help them. Let's talk about how you can mitigate the damage they can do. One of those ways is by not assigning them difficult positions. Give them a job they can actually do. If particularly if you have a mixed bag of spot ops of varying skill levels. There is no excuse for putting the new guys on the hardest people, especially if you're not doubling up your spots. Um, you really need to think hard. Maybe it's not the lead singer who's the hardest follow. Maybe it's the guitar player who is always running around in the background. Maybe it's the guy who is doing the most wardrobe changes that is actually the hardest follow or the biggest number of instrument changes. A guy who plays keyboard in one song and then runs over and plays on the percussion set in the next song and then has a harmonica he runs around with. That may not be obvious to someone who is a new operator that it's the same guy changing his instrument. I like to emphasize paying attention to their hair, but that doesn't help if the artist wears a lot of different hats. So uh, think very carefully about where you assign people. That's one way to make things easier. Another way to clarify things is to make sure that you know where everybody is so there's no confusion during the show. And on, on your end, if you're running a big show, running a desk, maybe you're running a video server at the same time, there's a lot going on and you don't wanna fumble in not knowing who your guys are. If you give a call for spot one, spot one, spot one, and there's no response, sooner or later you're gonna to wanna to bark that guy's or gal's name out. And how will you know their name? Here's how. You will have made a map at your spot meeting. This visual aid here is a piece of paper I take to every spot meeting. What are you looking at? Well, since I'm the LD for sticks on a multi-band bill, this represents the sticks set. We have a big video, big wall with video in it. We've got stairs that run up to an ego platform, a drummer, a keyboard riser. It's all fairly self-evident what's going on here. This part's a little confusing. I have rows for how many spots are working for each band. REO and sticks flip-flop positions. So six spots work for sticks and for REO, but only four spots work for Loverboy. And I have penciled in here the numbers that my other two compatriot designers prefer for their operators as well as my own numbers. And they are all different, right? Radically different sets of numbers. So at the spot meeting, what I have my operators do is actually write their names in these boxes. I tell them these six boxes represent the spots. 
They are looking at the stage. This would be stage left or house right. This would be stage right, house left. And I make them write their names down. And as it happens, I also have six pieces of gaff tape on the wall, which I have prepared before the spot meeting. And each piece of gaff tape has the correct numbers notated for which band. Every piece of tape says in little letters, Loverboy, Sticks, REO, and a number next to it. And at the top of the piece of tape, it also has the time at which those operators are required to be on headset, not on the platform, on headset with their lights fired up, ready to work. So this does two things, especially for new operators. It clarifies what their relative position is compared to their everybody else they're working with. I say to them, everybody take a look. Notice who's on your left and who's on your right. This is the order you need to be in at your follow spots. Also, the piece of tape keeps their numbers straight for them. Of course, sometimes you have to change the numbers, but it gives you a starting point so they can stick that on the side of their light and have it right in front of them that their numbers are changing with each band. And finally, the reason this is most valuable is after filling out this piece of paper, the operators get that piece of tape to stick on their shirt or laminate, and I take this piece of paper and I pass it to, in this case, Loverboy's LD. Loverboy is the opening act, my friend Chris McGuire. Chris takes the piece of paper, and on a night where, let's say, Styx is closing, he hands the same piece of paper to Paul Dexter, who is the LD for Aria Speedwagon. And Paul and Chris, who were not at the spot meeting and do not know the spot ops names, have a piece of paper telling them where everyone is and what numbers those spots think they are. They are free to change it, but they can say, okay, I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. So, Michelle, we're doing the REO Speedwagon show. You're spot four now. And Tom, you're spot three now, and so on down the line. So the piece of paper transfers the names between all of the designers, and the spots have a piece of tape demonstrating their proposed number shifts. So that's one way you handle things. It helps all the operators, but it's really effective for the new operators, so they get a visual thing that their numbers are going to change. They don't have to try and keep it in their heads. So consider doing that when you're managing multiple bands and multiple designers and multiple number shifts. Another time, we'll talk a little bit about what you do when you have excessively large numbers of spots, how you group them and how you call that. We'll probably talk about that next. All right, that's it for now.